Tonight, sectarian violence. More than 40 killed in northwest Pakistan in gun attack on Sher convoy. Putin's warning. Russia attacked Ukraine with a new missile and threatens Western countries arming Ukraine. Israel-Gaza war. ICC issues arrest warrants for Israel's Netanyahu, Gallant and Hamas leader. And healing robot NYU Langon performs world's first fully robotic double lung transplant. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ada Derna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Aquil Qureshi. Good evening and welcome down to World News Tonight. We've got quite a lot of key updates to bring to you from around the world. Let's begin in Pakistan. At least 41 people, including women and children, have been killed after an unidentified gunman opened fire on a convoy of 200 passenger vehicles travelling through a remote area of Pakistan. The vehicles were attacked as they travelled through the tribal district of Karam in Pakistan, close to the Afghan border. The gunman initially targeted the convoy's police escort, the provincial spokesman said in a statement. Police were protecting the convoy following months of sectarian violence in the area, which has claimed dozens of lives this year. Nadim Aslam Chaudhry, the chief secretary of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province, said that the attack was a major tragedy, with a death toll likely to rise. Details of exactly what happened are still emerging, but Javed Ulam Hesud, a senior administration official, said approximately 10 attackers were involved, firing indiscriminately from both sides of the road. He also added that women and children had hidden in nearby houses while police hunted for the attackers. He said in an earlier statement that most of the passengers travelling in the convoy through the mountainous area were Shia. Sunni and Shia Muslim tribes have clashed repeatedly this year, and earlier series of attacks ended after a tribal council called for a ceasefire. Sectarian violence is often linked to land disputes in the region. Russia fired an intercontinent of ba ballistic missiles during an attack on the Ukraine city in what could be the first use of war on weapon designs to deliver long-distance nuclear strikes. Originally designed to deliver nuclear warheads, intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs, can travel up to 6,000 kilometers at high speed. Ukraine's military says Russia launched one at the city of Dnipro this Thursday. The claim hasn't been confirmed, but damage to various buildings in the city is severe. It would mark the first attack from such a weapon in almost three years of war. Kyiv says it's opened an investigation. ICBMs are reminders of the Cold War, when fears of nuclear attacks dominated military doctrine. Ukraine has batteries of Patriot missile defence systems that are capable of intercepting ICBMs, but it only has a limited number of them, meaning some cities, like the capital, are more protected than others. Russia has refused to comment on the attack, its foreign ministry spokeswoman even receiving an urgent phone call during a briefing to make sure she didn't mention it. This comes just days after Ukraine used US-provided attackers for the first time, hitting Russia in its Bryansk region. The Kremlin has also confirmed it shot down Storm Shadow missiles, acknowledging Ukraine's use of the British-French-made long-range weapons. The Air Force chiefs of South Korea, the US and Japan had held the first ever online meeting to strengthen defense corporations in the East Asian region. South Korea's Air Force Chief General Yi young su met virtually with his U.S. and Japanese counterparts, Generals David Alvin and Hiroaki Uchikura on Thursday morning. They discussed ways to enhance coordination in response to escalating threats from North Korea. And the Air Chiefs also agreed to regularize these meetings and expand joint drills beyond the six conducted since last year, including two during this year's Freedom Edge exercises. Ten people were arrested and three officers were injured during a march in Ecuador protesting President Daniel Noboa economic policies and the ongoing energy crisis. The march, which comprised union members, students and social groups, proceeded through the streets of the capital to president, a presidential palace. Protesters voiced their disapproval of the government's power cuts and perceived lack of investment in education, among other issues. 
Tensions escalated when police barricades prevented protesters from advancing further into downtown Quaiter. Some individuals attempted to breach the police blockade by thro throwing stones and other objects of officers. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. On the road to the White House tonight, President-elect Donald Trump announced that Pam Bondi would replace Matt Gates as his pick for Attorney General after records surfaced of the latter of paying $10,000 to two women for testifying in sexual misconduct probes against Gates. It's the first setback for Donald Trump in his proposed administration. Matt Gates, the President-elect's pick for Attorney General, has withdrawn from consideration for the role. His potential nomination had sparked controversy and a debate over whether to release a congressional report on sexual misconduct allegations against him. Gates said he wanted to avoid a needlessly protracted Washington scuffle. While the momentum was strong, it's clear that my confirmation was unfairly becoming a distraction to the critical work of the Trump Vance transition. The former Florida congressman is the subject of a report sparked by allegations of sexual misconduct including sex with a minor and illicit drug use. Leaked documents alleged there were web payments between Gates and dozens of friends and associates who were said to have taken part with him in sex parties. Gates has denied any wrongdoing. Lawmakers, including some fellow Republicans, had expressed concern over his nomination. The House Ethics Committee, which compiled the report into Gates, met behind closed doors on Wednesday to debate whether or not to release it. A debate which is no longer relevant following Gates's withdrawal, according to the ethics chair. In a social media post, Trump said he appreciated Gates's efforts to become the US's top lawyer and that he had a wonderful future. Gates was likely to struggle to secure confirmation from the Senate because of the shadow cast by the long-running investigation into him. He resigned from his House seat last week after his nomination. Trump has now nominated former Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi in his place. Also in the U.S., much-needed rain soaked the northeast, though it won't be enough to end a drought. On the west coast, the storm system brought torrential rain to North California, raising the risk of mudslides. That desperately needed rain finally soaking the northeast. Umbrellas out in force in New York City for the first time in months. The rain will ease the fire danger that's been plaguing the northeast, but it's not enough to end the drought. Overnight, this storm spawning a confirmed tornado in Pittsburgh. Powerful winds there knocking down trees. That massive swirling system also ushering in the first snow of the season for millions from the Midwest to the Northeast. The conditions treacherous, multiple crashes outside Chicago. Meanwhile, in the West, after knocking out power to hundreds of thousands in Washington state, killing two people, that other swirling system now funneling a fire hose of rain into Northern California flooding fields and homes, swamping roads. And along the burn scars across California tonight, the risk of mudslides. The International Criminal Court has issued arrest warrants for the Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the country's former defense minister Yov Gallant, and the Hamas military leaders Mohammed Daif, who alleged war crimes relating to the Gaza war. The decision turns Israel's prime minister into an internationally wanted suspect. The International Criminal Court is pursuing Benjamin Netanyahu for alleged war crimes and crimes against humanity, including intentionally attacking civilians, starvation as a method of warfare and persecution. Netanyahu said he categorically rejected the absurd and false lies levelled against him, describing them as anti-Semitic, as he did when ICC prosecutor Karim Khan announced he was seeking the arrest warrant back in May. The three-judge panel also issued a warrant for Netanyahu's former defence minister, Yoav Gallant, for the same crimes. No one in the world has the moral right to criticise the state of Israel and its capabilities and the way we behave. Israeli leaders fiercely and unanimously criticised the court's decision, 
while human rights groups applauded it. Hamas also welcomed the decision and asked the court to hold all Israeli leaders accountable. It made no mention of the arrest warrant against one of its leaders, Mohammed Daif, over his responsibility as commander of Hamas's armed wing for the mass killings, taking of hostages and other crimes of the October 7th attacks on Israel. Israel says it killed Daif in a July airstrike in the Gaza Strip, which Hamas has not confirmed nor denied. The ICC emphasised that Israel's acceptance of its jurisdiction was not required, while the EU's high representative called for the decision to be respected and implemented. Despite that, none of the suspects is likely to face the judges anytime soon. The court's member states are required to detain suspects under a warrant if they set foot on their soil. But the court lacks a mechanism to enforce that. And neither Israel nor the United States is a member. Former Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro and some of his closest allies have been formally accused of allegedly plotting a coup after he lost the 2022 presidential election. Brazil's federal police formally accused former President Jair Bolsonaro of his role in an alleged 2022 coup conspiracy, according to a statement on Thursday. Police said 36 other people were also accused, including Bolsonaro's 2022 running mate. Bolsonaro lost the election to rival Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva. The final police report caps a nearly two-year investigation into Bolsonaro's role in the election-denying movement, which culminated in January 2023 with his supporters sweeping the capital Brasilia. Many protesters said they had wanted to create chaos to justify a military coup. One police source told Reuters that the investigation points to Bolsonaro as a key player in the conspiracy. They will seek to hold him criminally responsible for attempting to violently overthrow democratic rule. On social media, Bolsonaro said investigators and the Supreme Court judge had been creative and done everything the law does not say. His lawyer told Reuters he would wait to see the report before commenting. The formal police accusations are a fresh blow to Bolsonaro's plans to run for president in 2026. His allies are trying to overturn a court decision blocking him from public office until 2030 over his conduct. Separately on Tuesday, police arrested five people suspected of involvement in a plot that included assassinating Lula just days before he took office. Lula spoke about the attempted poisoning for the first time on Thursday. CNN Brazil reported on Thursday that police have concluded Bolsonaro had, quote, full knowledge of a plot to kill then-president-elect Lula da Silva in 2022 before he took office. The prosecutor general's office will decide if and when to press charges against Bolsonaro and the 36 accused. Haiti's foreign minister summoned the French ambassador to addressing unacceptable remarks by President Emmanuel Macron at the G20 summit this week in Brazil, in which accused the Caribbean country's transitional council of being a total morons for firing its prime minister. Their comments that have caused outrage in Haiti. In this video circulating on social media, shot at the G20 summit, Emmanuel Macron is talking to an individual who accuses the French president of being responsible for the situation in Haiti. Visibly irritated, Macron does not hold back in his response. Remarks that were strongly condemned by Haiti's foreign ministry. The ministry announced it had summoned the French ambassador, who acknowledged that the comments were inappropriate. Earlier this month, then Prime Minister Gary Cooney was fired by Haiti's transitional presidential council after less than six months in office. His relationship with the council had been tense from the get-go. The final straw seemed to be his attempts to fire three council members who were accused of corruption. The council was formed in April after Ariel Henry, Cooney's predecessor, was ousted by gangs that have seized parts of the capital. It has been tasked with restoring order and laying the groundwork for elections in the country, which has been without a president since 2021. Airbnb bringing gladiators back. This criticised deal will let users play gladiator in Rome's Colosseum, but has left some city officials enraged. Epic battles of epic proportions. The Colosseum will be the venue of staged gladiator fights for the first time in two millennia. To host the event, Airbnb pledged $1.5 million to the Colosseum Archaeological Park to restore the Roman amphitheater. 
16 of the platform's users will be selected to participate in faux gladiator fights in May next year. The promotional site for the experience proposes a thrilling descent into underground chambers where warriors prepared for battles. Participants will have a choice between different types of swords, shields, and armor before a night of heroic combat overseen by a referee. Some city officials are outraged by the proposal, worrying the UNESCO heritage site will become an amusement park. Others criticize Airbnb's role in raising rental prices in the city. Coliseum director Alfonso Russo said the deal with Airbnb coincides with the release of the film Gladiator 2, which premiered in Italy last Thursday. Supporters of the partnership with the Coliseum say the live-action gladiator fights will bring emotion and imagination closer to historical reality. This wouldn't be the first time that private corporations have been solicited to preserve Rome's historical monuments. In 2015, Rome's Trevi Fountain reopened after a $3 million restoration effort by an Italian fashion giant. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. And finally tonight, a surgical team at NYU Langone Health has performed the first fully robotic doubling lung transplant in the world. The procedure marks a breakthrough in the potential of robotic surgery and minimally invasive patient care. Meet Cheryl Mercar, the world's first recipient of a fully robotic double lung transplant. The procedure builds on other minimally invasive operations and is aimed at speeding up the healing process and shortening hospital stays. Merkar has always been an active person. In addition to her work as an emergency medical technician, she is a motorcycle enthusiast and owns a karate school with her husband. But for more than a decade, Merkar has suffered from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which only worsened after a bout of COVID. The 57-year-old remembers the moment she knew she was in trouble. She spent years looking for help before the NYU Langone Health Center said she was eligible for a lung transplant. Mercar went under the knife at NYU Langone on October 22nd. During the procedure, a team of doctors works in tandem with the robot as it removes the diseased lungs, prepares the surgical site for implantation, and then implants the donor lungs. Less than a month after the surgery, Mercar is already up and walking at the hospital. As she heals, Mercar has had time to reflect on what it means to be the world's first. Now, just a few days before she is set to be discharged, she's focused on those who have helped her, including her organ donor. Thank you very much for joining us on World News Tonight. We'll be back with the latest updates around the world on Monday. But until then, stay tuned as we've got Anuradha Rikma Singha. We'll be joining you next on Nike Business Report. I'm Akul Qureshi, and good night.